Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Ryder here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of an elderly patient who attended with bilateral blocked ears. And as you can see, they have got a very medial impacted earwax and this dead mushy skin that I'm just vacuuming right now. Uh, what made this procedure more complex than your normal procedure is that the patient's ear canal is somewhat collapsed near the entrance. And having a collapsed ear canal is not uncommon um, in elderly patients. And that's for the reason that the cartilage portion of the ear canal, the outer third, over time it can weaken with age, it can also weaken with trauma and chronic infections. And that causes the cartilage just to buckle uh, under gravity. A lot of... Um, Elderly patients also, um, they can also suffer from droopy nasal tips. So the, the, the lower third of the um, nose is made up of cartilage, whereas the upper two thirds of the nose is made up of bone. And similarly with gravity, um, it can cause the, the cartilage tip of the nose to, to droop or uh, to dip somewhat as we age. So, it's, a, so it's, it's not uncommon, it's a bit of a natural phenomenon just with age. And for that reason, uh, when entering the ear, I had to stretch the patient's ear open. And the way we did that is uh, the endoscope is being held in my left hand, my non-dominant hand. And the instrument is being held in my dominant right hand. And before I insert the endoscope, uh, I'm actually holding the instrument in my right hand, but simultaneously I'm pulling the, the, the ear back and up. So the pinna, which is the, cart the flap of cartilage on the outside part of our ears, uh, which are protruding out on the side of our heads, uh, with my right hand, I'm pulling that back and up. And what that does, by pulling it back, it stretches the ear open. And by pulling it up, it then levels the ear canal. So the, the ear canal is slightly inclined. It's not a straight horizontal tube. You've got these bends and twists and the ear canal's got kind of upward sloping. It's about a 32 degree angle. So by pulling the ear, so this is in the case of the left ear, by pulling the ear back, so to the right hand side and then up, you're not only stretching, but also straightening the ear canal. And that then gives me access to insert the instrument. Otherwise, the ear canal entrance is completely shut. It's collapsed. I can't insert the, the instrument. So I've managed to remove more of the lateral wax and this dead mushy skin. The remaining mushy skin, you can see it's stuck to the eardrum, just to the right of screen, you can see some of the eardrum, the posterior part of the eardrum. So that's that blue tinge. And it's quite difficult with this consistency of wax and skin because it's hard to suction. Um, it's very hard to get a suction grip and quite often the mushy consistency can block the inside of the suction tube um, and reduce suction power. Therefore, I've installed some olive oil earwax spray. It's medical grade olive oil spray that we use. And that helps to change the consistency of this wax and dead skin. Um, if you've been watching my channel and my videos, you know I like to make uh, food analogies and I always compare um, olive oil in the ear similarly to an egg in a potato cake or fish cake recipe, for example, it helps to bind all the ingredients together. And in the same way, it helps to bind this wax dead skin together. It's, a, it's easy to suction and it comes out in larger lumps. I'm just working here at the roof of the ear canal. And we've got to be careful because we are in the bony part of the ear canal now, the more sensitive part, the inner two thirds. And I'm just gliding across the roof and as I'm gliding, I'm coming away downwards. And you can see I managed to get that dead skin away. This is the front part of the ear canal. This is the region that's difficult to get access to because the ears uh, collapsed and it's very narrow. So again, I'm stretching the ear open. I'm keeping it ajar with the endoscope, actually. I'm using the endoscope almost like a doorstop. So not only is the endoscope inside the ear to visualize the earwax, but it's also being used to stretch and straighten the ear canal um, and then I can then go in with the, the suction probe. So you can see even with the suction probe here it's not suctioning too well and in fact it's almost squashing this wax and dead skin. 
skin together. So you've got to be careful. We don't want to further impact it against the eardrum. And you can just see that mushy consistency. So I think I'm going to go back in with some more oil. Just soaking it and a new technique that I'm using more and more in the last year or so is I'm actually performing the procedure with the oil in situ. Previously, I would put the oil into the ear, let it soak for a few minutes, let, let it work its magic. And then I'll request the patient to tilt their head back in the opposite direction so we can drain the ear of the oil. Uh, so I can then go back in and uh, continue with the procedure. But now I, I kind of just ask the patient just to tilt the head across slightly. So the ear with the oil in is facing towards the ceiling somewhat. Uh, I then get off my ENT chair and I'm standing up looking down into the ear, which means I can then suction uh, the wax and the, the skin with the oil in. I just find that's a bit more effective. It can sometimes be a bit more tricky though because you get a bit more blurring uh, and that's because as you're suctioning, you're also suctioning the oil and that can cause a bit of blurring at the tip of the lens of the endoscope. So far we can see the back half, the back hemisphere of the eardrum, but the front part, it's still completely blocked and it's lodged in the anterior recess. As we approach the eardrum, the ear canal narrows and it widens again. And in the case of the left ear, it widens to the left. And that creates a hidden um, alcove and a recess. And quite often you can get wax and dead skin that gets entrapped in that alcove and it's very difficult to remove. It's difficult to get access into there. If I was using a, a microscope or indeed the wax scope, which is the other device that I've developed, because of the optics of uh, an ENT microscope or the wax scope, sometimes it's not even possible to view inside the anterior recess. With an endoscope, the optics are completely different, and that's because the endoscope's inside the ear. So we can manipulate the endoscope lens, uh, we can uh, maneuver it, and because it's in the ear, we can see into these little, um, little alcoves and dips and crevices that may exist within the ear canal. And it's a lot more difficult to do that with um, magnifying loops or ENT microscopes, or indeed the wax scope as well. And that's why an endoscope, with regards to performing earwax removal, I feel, and I think the evidence is there uh, through all the videos, it's the most superior method because of the, the optics it provides. However, using an endoscope is quite tricky, um, hence why we've developed the wax scope. What a lot of specialists find difficult with an endoscope is the coordination between both hands because you're using, as I said, the non-dominant hand to not only hold the endoscope but also to manipulate the ear to make straighten it and stretch it and then simultaneously using the dominant hand with the instrument to remove the wax. So it does require a lot of bilateral integration, coordination. With the wax scope or when you use an ENT operating microscope or head loops, you're actually holding a speculum to stretch and straighten the ear canal and you use that in your non-dominant hand. Uh, a speculum is what is normally attached to the ear torch that a doctor looks inside your ear with. It's a, a hollow funnel. So you've got um, one narrow end and one wider end. The narrow end goes into the ear and the wider end is protruding out of the ear and that's what the specialist holds to insert the speculum into your ear and then to manipulate, widen and stretch your ear canal. And then with your dominant hand, you insert the instrument through the speculum and into the ear. So that's how you perform um, ear wax removal using a microscope or head loops or indeed the wax scope. Uh, with the wax scope, we've got the speculum actually attached to the end of the device. If anyone doesn't know what the wax scope is, it's a new device that I've just developed. Um, there's a link in the description of my other YouTube channel, uh, Clear Wax YouTube channel, where you can watch loads of videos with the wax scope. So the view is completely different. It's more narrow, of course, because you've got the speculum, hasn't got the wide field of view that uh, an endoscope uh, provides you, but it's more user friendly for specialists. They, they, they tend not to struggle as much uh, because the speculum, as soon as you've got it in, you can just manipulate that to stretch and straighten the ear. So as you can see, we managed to remove all that debris off the anterior recess in the eardrum. The eardrum is now fully visible. I'm just mopping up around the edge and the front part of the ear canal. The patient has got a bit of uh, dead skin, as you can see here. Um, it's kind of a fresh layer of dead skin. It may not be fully ready to, to, to suction. Um, this skin eventually will um, detach 
off the canal wall and it will turn more into orange color and darker shade of brown um, due through the oxidization process. You can see here just how narrow the air canal is as I'm not stretching the, the entrance. It was completely shut. Now I am stretching it open. So it's a bit of vascularis of the handle of malleus. What we mean by that, you can see the, the hammer bone that's attached to the eardrum slightly red, the blood vessels are dilated. And that's because the wax plug and the soft, mushy skin was directly on the eardrum. And as you remove it, it of course stimulates all the, the blood flow and the blood vessels. But that's fine, nothing to worry about. Just hovering on the back part of the ear canal, just gonna mop all this. These are all bonus points, really. We could all leave that, but Patient's very still, we're in there, why not just suction it out for them? It's, no, it's, it's low risk, no risk really attached to me removing those last bits. So that's the patient's eardrum, that's all done. So this is their right ear, so they've also got a, a blockage in their right ear. The left ear was the worst of the two. And again, we've got a collapsed ear canal entrance, so I'm just using the endoscope to stretch the ear open to the left. And I'm just removing this plug from the entrance. You can see how sticky and glutinous and mushy it is. I think I'm going to develop uh, an earwax chart, so the stool chart. Um, so medics will know what I'm referring to. Um, there's a, oh, I forgot the name of the, 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 the stool chart. There is a name for it. And it's used by doctors and nurses to assess the kind of consistency of stool that their patients are producing and then uh, that gives an indicator of uh, their overall health and any specific health problems the patient may be uh, experiencing. Oh, it's going to bug me now. I know the, S the Snellen, that's the eye chart, but I just I completely... It's, I, I do, it will hopefully come back to me, the name of the stool chart. So I've removed all the lateral debris and we've just got some residual debris on the eardrum. Again, it's really, really sticky. See the back part of the eardrum there, the blue tinge. I'm just going to lift this away. Uh, you'll see in a moment after I move this plug, that patient has got some debris again in that anterior recess region. This anterior is just a bit more prominent. Um, I'm having to curl around the front part of the ear canal. So where I am now, that's the anterior canal wall. And the anterior recess is hidden behind that. If we make contact with that anterior canal wall, because it's on the bony part, it'd be really uncomfortable for the patient. So a little technique that we can use is not so much with the zonal suction probe that I'm using now, but we can attach a fine end. So it's a, it's a narrower suction tube. We attach it to the end and we can just slightly bend the tip of that. And that can then be used to curl around the anterior canal wall. So we've got good space. Be, um, We've got a bit of headroom, so we're not going to make contact. I'm not sure if I do use that technique here. We shall see. So this is the anterior recess. So it's the hidden cave, alcove, to the front part of the eardrum. So in the case of the right ear, this is on the right-hand side. Uh, you would have seen in the left ear, it's on the opposite side. And this is the anterior canal wall there. So even at this stage, the patient can hear significantly better. Um, because they were so still and I felt comfortable, I, I just thought I'll go back in, see if I can remove a bit bit more for them and you may just see that I've just bent the tip ever so slightly so it's like there's a bit of curvature there and that helps me to get curled around the anterior canal wall and I'm now just kissing the surface of the eardrum and you can see it's slowly coming away we're not going to get every little aspect but uh, we'll get as much as uh, safely possible So you can see at this this view, you can't see the anterior recess. It's hidden from, from the front part of the ear canal. But with an endoscope, if we angle it correctly, and I'm just going to stretch the patient's ear in a moment. If we angle it correctly, we can uh, orientate the tip of the endoscope to view. So you can see now, we, we can now see the anterior recess where we couldn't before. I'm just mopping up near the entrance. One of the things that patients were, were reporting is that their ear was very sticky. It felt like it stuck together. And you, you can see why, because all this is really sticky, and especially at night if they're 
laying on their side uh, against their ear. Both sides of the ear canal, because of all this sticky debris, um, they, they come together and it closes the ear canal. It's like glue. So it takes a while for them in the morning to, whilst they're, uh, during the course of the day when they're opening and closing their jaw, uh, the ear canal can unstick itself, separate itself from the other side of the canal wall. But it's came to the stage it's becoming more frequent and becoming more difficult for the ear to unstick it and unplug itself. So just got a little bit of debris here. I'm just going to see if it comes away. But yeah, we're really happy with that. The patient could hear much, much better. You can just see how that eardrum has just veered to the right. So it's quite a bendy ear canal. Just mopping up on the cartilaginous portion. This is the first bend to the left, that cartilage. We can tell that because of all the hairs there. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. I hope you're all keeping well and safe. Do stay tuned. I've got loads more videos to upload in due course. Thank you. Bye.